U.S. President Barack Obama is in Beijing, China for Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation, or APEC, meetings. The president is moving forward on efforts to establish deeper economic partnerships in the region, which is a cornerstone of his foreign policy. President Obama is holding direct talks with President, Chinese President Xi Jinping, who, can, who where contentious issues like cybersecurity on, is on the agenda. The president today announced a new agreement with China for visas. That will benefit everyone from students to tourists to businesses, large and small. Under the current arrangement, visas between our two countries last for only one year. Under the new arrangement, student and exchange visas will be extended to five years. Business and tourist visas will be extended to 10 years. Tom Grunfeld is a State University of New York Distinguished Teaching Professor in Asian Studies at Empire State College, and he's joining us right here in our New York studios. Tom, nice to meet you. Nice to so meet the you. president is, is, I believe, doing four stops uh, in uh, Beijing, Burma, Australia. That might be, just be three. Uh, and I want to talk about China specifically okay. uh, in a moment. But first, give us just the broad view. What are his broad goals on this tour? Well, his broad goals are to better relations with the whole region. Uh, there are all sorts of issues from uh, military issues to economic issues, uh, issues of human rights, for example, in Myanmar, Burma. So there, there's a host of things that he would like to have uh, discussed and perhaps some resolution to issues. But it's unlikely he'll accomplish very much. Yeah, well, and that leads me to my next question, yes. specifically about China. There's been very strained relations, mm -hmm. lots going mm -hmm. on, China asserting mm -hmm. itself as, its, mm -hmm. as a big economic mm -hmm. power. Uh, are there any expectations of, of getting anything substantively done? We have very low expectations of anything uh, getting done. Even this visa issue, we'll have to see what the details are. I think it's less than it appears to be. But um, China feels that it's on the rise. It feels that the United States is in decline. Um, it feels that uh, President Obama is weak at the moment. He's a lame duck. He has a Congress that's hostile to him on most issues, although on a trade issue, they're actually supportive of him, much more than the Democrats. Mm -hmm. But as a whole, um, uh, China feels that he's not really someone they can negotiate with. I mean, let me take a step back and, and sort of help us all understand exactly this organization, APEC, what, what it is. Well, the idea is to, to have all the countries surround, that surround the Pacific, including uh, South America, East Asia, uh, uh, the United States, Canada, uh, to have a, a trade uh, association, to make trade easier among these countries. Mm -hmm. And so should we, should we have any then expectations in terms of what the U.S. might do to influence this uh, coalition? Well, there, there's no one overall issue that includes all those countries except to facilitate trade. Uh, but there are uh, many uh, bilateral issues uh, with Southeast Asia, with uh, China, with uh, Myanmar. Um, these are all things that can be talked about on the sidelines uh, of the meeting. There are other things going on as well. So, for example, for the first time in two years, the Chinese and Japanese, uh, the Chinese president and the Japanese prime minister met. Uh, this was a big deal. It's symbolic, I think, for the most part, but nevertheless a big deal. And so these, these meetings allow for these issues to be talked about, at least broached, on the sidelines of the formal meetings. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the president is meeting with a number of leaders. He is. Uh, particular, uh, is there a particular leader that would be considered uh, his greatest um, ally or, or partner in achieving something? Australia. Uh, would be his, his closest ally, I think. But there are other countries in the region, in Southeast Asia, for example, Vietnam, Japan, um, that want to have closer ties to the United States to balance China. Some might say that this trip is a good time because it provides a bit of diversion for the members of the media to talk about something else besides his Middle East foreign policy and uh, the disastrous midterm for the Democrats that just happened. But you mentioned this, you alluded to this in ju just a second ago. This time also sort of weakens his effectiveness globally, doesn't it? It does. Uh, there's no question it weakens his, his effectiveness because, as I said, he has two years. Uh, the 2016 presidential election has already started. 
Um, and so everyone is looking to see what happens in two years. And he has, as I said, except for the trade issue, there's something called the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which uh, the president wants very badly, but many Democrats in Congress are vehemently opposed to it, but the Republicans in Congress support it. So apart from that issue, there are issues of contention. Um, and uh, despite all the rhetoric of the last few days that everyone's going to work together and make Washington work, I, I think that we are skeptical. We'll have to see if that's really true. And I think out, outside of the United States, they don't really think it's going to happen. Yeah, a rather steep mountain to climb, I would sure. say. Tom Grunfeld, thank you very much. Sure, my nice pleasure. Nice to talk to you.